Hello and welcome to episode 21.5 of the Never Heard of It podcast. I'm Craig Moorhead. And I'm Sean Harwell. And yeah, thanks for joining us on another little mini adventure here. Uh, episode 21 is, is out there in the ether. We talk about the movie Rhinoceros starring Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder. So go check that out. And today we're going to talk about some stuff that uh, you've either heard about or you probably will very soon. So I think maybe we should just dive right in, Craig. What do you think? Let's dive right in. First up, we were talking earlier about this might be an entire Peak Nostalgia podcast. Uh, yes. First up, briefly, there's a Jumanji reboot in the ma- in the making. Jake Kasdan at the at the wheel of this vehicle that's out of control. Jack Black looks like he might join on. Dwayne Johnson, also known as the Pebble, the Rock, he's in it. Jumanji, the beloved uh, Robin Williams movie from the '90s. Sean, what are your feelings about this reboot? Uh, inevitable. I think it was inevitable. And uh, you know what? I like the cast. I mean, it's impossible to dislike The Rock. I, I think that's been proven by science at this point. Mm-hmm. And I'm a long, long-time fan of Jack Black. I, I, I think of that movie as one of those early CGI movies. Like, that was the big thing. Like, it had that trailer moment with all those animals. And you're like, whoa, look at what CGI has done now. So it'll be interesting to see how they sort of how you up the ante of that? Is it just like, oh, okay, the animals look slightly better, like 2016 better, or did they really push the envelope and show us something new? So, yeah, I think it's inevitable. I don't think it's uh, quite peak nostalgia yet. I don't think it's a sign of uh, any sort of downtrend. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just the beginning of a sequel uh, or a number of Jumanji films if this one hits hits the mark. Indeed. Uh the thing I find most interesting about this casting, and I haven't read very deeply into this because there's no point. There'll be a movie. Mm-hmm. But um, just looking at what the cast right now, I kind of don't know what this is going to look like. I kind of know. Totally. What, I, I kind of don't know what the take is going to be. I don't yeah. know. Like, is Jack Black going to be Robin Williams or is The Rock going to be Robin Williams? I have no <laughs> idea. Like, either one of them could be the, the full lead in sure, it, you know? yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. So we'll see. Jumanji was one of those. It didn't really stick with me no. back in the day. It'll be interesting to see, yeah. too, if this then leads to a Zathura uh, remake or reboot, since I think I believe oh, that's right. the same author. And I, I feel like that was one of those movies where like, yeah, everybody, everybody was like, that was really good, actually. And, you know, that sort of was a, a real kind of tipping point for John Favreau's career to go and in that sort of big franchise direction. But yeah. I also feel like it didn't, like a ton of people didn't see it, you know? And maybe I'm just remembering yeah. that incorrectly, but I don't know, I'd be curious to see if if, if that's coming as well. Uh, I have another little bit of reboot news that um, yeah. I'm actually kind of excited about this. Well, I, I'm curious at least, and I definitely like the people involved. It, it turns out uh, there's another Zorro movie coming, and this time apparently it's going to be set in the future. And the article I read didn't know anything really beyond that as far as the plot is concerned. This is going to be directed and I think written by uh, Jonas Cuaron, who is the son of Alfonso Cuaron, also was a co-writer on Gravity. So obviously some some pretty good pedigree right there. And it's going to star Gael Garcia Bernal from, you know, E2 Mama Tambien or Mozart in the Jungle, if you're watching that. I love that guy. I think he's a, a terrific actor in a really broad range of, of ways and kind of perfect for that role. Like he's got that charm and charisma. He can be funny. He can be serious. I don't know if they're going to like buff him up or, or what. I kind of feel like don't do that. Like he seems like this kind of little dude, you know? And I sort of like the idea of like, yeah, make Zorro a little dude. Like that's keep him that way. And that could be part of it. doesn't need to be a superhero. No, that could be part of the fun of it. That sounds great. Uh, Zorro's uh, Zorro's been around for a really long time. Glad to see he's still going strong. I wonder if this time, like, he's going to somehow do his little sword riding cursive Z with, I don't know, like a like a lightsaber or something. <laughs> if there's... That'd be a hell of a crossover if he showed up, like, in the Han Solo movie. <laughs> I think you, you just launched a new franchise, dude. I like it. Yeah. Other cool news. Mm-hmm. Our friend Andre the Giant, no longer with us. Uh, Rest in peace, Andre. Yeah. The Giant. But apparently there's a biopic in the works about that guy. Who do you cast? That's I mean it lives and dies with that, doesn't it? It kind of does. I mean, luckily with CGI we can we can actually approximate That's someone true. who won't look completely ridiculous as Andre the Giant. <laughs> but uh but yeah, I mean who? 
besides the I rock mean, i don't want to just go with the rock but he's one of the biggest bankable people i can think of right off the bat yeah but i mean not not, I, not the body type at all like yeah who who would it be paul giamatti <laughs> CGI, uh, yes I, i'm just gonna say yes yeah. to that I mean, the only thing I thought of was Jason Siegel because he did an impression of Andre the Giant, one of those Judd <laughs> Apatow movies, and it was like spot on. <laughs> That'll probably get it for him, yeah. I mean, who, uh, no one looks like him. No one was like him. Like that is, yeah, he is one of a kind. There's, it was. I think it was a podcast. I'm blanking on the name of it, but Carrie Elways uh, did an interview, and I, he's got a book about the the Princess Bride anyway, so I'm sure it's it's recounted in the book. But just some amazing stories about going out and drinking with that guy, because obviously, like his tolerance, given the fact of how big he is, is going to be way higher than everybody else's. And uh, just some fantastic stories. None of it, I think, really paints Andre in a negative light. Just sort of because I, I think, and that would be interesting in the, in the movies. Like, I sort of don't want to see anything that kind of takes away that uh, mystique of him from me you know so i don't know i don't yeah i don't really know much about his personal life but part of me doesn't want to dig too deep (laughs) into the into any sort of dark corners um i certainly don't want the the what what seems like the inevitable article anytime a biopic comes out now that says you know why did it gloss over the fact that he murdered children you know like i don't i don't want to know anything (laughs) maybe i don't want to know that much about him maybe i just want a glowing lovely movie about him what if the movie actually uncovers that he was not a giant? Wait, what? He's actually Andre the Dwarf. Andre the Little Person. Yeah. That'd be kind of okay. interesting. Yes. Well, let's. I have another bit of news. And this, this was sort of in, in our current news cycle. It, it was big news, which means it was big news for like eight hours, basically. <laughs> and will be forgotten about a week from now. But in, in the sort of biopic realm, apparently there's this very well regarded screenplay that I think was on the blacklist about Ronald Reagan's last few years in office as president. And I I don't know specifically if the movie is claiming that he started to suffer dementia during those years, or if it's just imagining what it would look like if he did. But at any rate, that's the thread that was taken away from that when it was announced that Will Ferrell was going to star as Reagan in this movie. And there was an immediate backlash as soon as that announcement was made. I know one of his his daughters uh, wrote a pretty emotionally charged letter um, asking them not to make this movie, specifically with Will. And they got what they wanted. Um, He dropped out of it. And so I don't know. I, I asked you about this earlier, and I don't think you had heard about it. Do you have any sort of opinion on how that goes down that the media influences a decision like that. Cause it, I think it's, it's unfair in a lot of ways to the actor. Cause obviously you're, you're just basing that opinion on what you know previously of that person's career. Right. Right. You know, if it had been, I don't know, Michael Fassbender, would they have had the same reaction? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I think the fact that it was who it was definitely informed the immediate sort of negative opinion that it was going to be played as a broad comedy. Right, and I, I get the sensitivity of that. I also feel really bad for the screenwriter because who knows now if that movie's going to get made. Yeah, I don't know. Like, are we too eager to throw up the pitchforks w- without knowing the whole story in something like this? Yeah, I mean, I think I think in general, yeah, people are are definitely eager to throw out the pitchforks. I mean, uh, I certainly have been in the past. I'm taking measures now. I'm in a program right now to help me uh, throw away my pitchfork. Pitchforks Anonymous. <laughs> I think also there there are there are a lot of people who are very invested in protecting an idea of Reagan. Sure. A certain idea of Reagan that he's amazing. And so I think anything that comes out with that, honestly, I, I don't know who you would cast. I don't know who would be the right person to cast, because I think anyone would get scrutiny just because it's Reagan. No one no one would want him to touch it. You know, like if it was Oliver Stone making the movie that would be fuel for the movie, you know? Right. So it, it would seem like if people came out and said, Oliver Stone can't make a movie about my beloved Reagan, then, yeah, the studio would be like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> this is exactly yeah, what we no want. Yeah, no kidding. At the end of the day, I'm, I also feel like, dude, it's just a, it's just a movie. I mean, it's just yeah. a movie. Yeah. Are we that? Like, what other movies do you watch and think, oh, yeah, that was absolutely true? Like, they're called documentaries. Uh, and even then, yeah. you know? So I, I don't know. It feels like... 
in some ways there was a lot of backlash against the idea of that Steve Jobs movie that came out, the right. Danny Boyle thing. And again, like give it three weeks and people move on to the next thing. They don't care. Like in some ways you're drawing attention to this thing and creating this discussion just through the publicity of it that, you know, if you just let the movie live on its own terms and let people actually try to interpret something or put something in a context, you know, right. I don't know. It feels like we'd be better off as a society if you could just see this movie and make up your own mind that it is either true or not true or, or partially true or just right. you know, complete like fantasy. Like let it, let it exist first. Yeah, exactly. And then and then deal with it on its own terms. And I think I think you're right. I mean, I I think there are some movies that are that are wrong-headed to begin with and maybe maybe would deserve an instant backlash before they even exist. But right. but these like like the Jobs movie and this movie, like these this is kind of like fanboy stuff. This is like don't, you know, yeah. don't touch my my character that I like. And that's that's complete BS. I I, I wish I it wish is. no one had to give in to that. Uh, I understand why they would if it's causing enough of a problem. I mean, the studio wants to make money on it. And also, before any president ever steps in office, they're already subject to this exact same kind of like political comedic interpretation. Yeah. You know, I mean, they've had like political impersonators on the comedy circuit for years. You know, this is not anything new. And how many skits about Reagan were there on SNL? Like, right. why is this any different than that? Like, I'm sorry, you're in one of the highest offices in the world. You are a, a, a public figure. Like, it's okay to put you in fictionalized settings, you know, for the sake of comedy. I, I think, you know, I don't know, it's an interesting story. And like, it's, it's, it's crazy that um, that campaign was successful. I mean, yeah. Well, and it kind of takes me back to the early days of Ain't It Cool News, and and I don't know if this is kind of the, the philosophy over there now, but I remember it sort of being the philosophy over there, you know, like a decade ago, where they seemed to feel like it was their duty to influence yeah. movies. And so they would get these tips, and they would find out these top secret things, and if they didn't like it, you know, they would try and sway these filmmakers, and for a long time people were really, like, courting them to help them, you know, get their movies off the ground and stuff. And and I, all that just seems so awful. I, I I always hated that philosophy, and I just like it's great. Like I, I loved the fact that that site tended to be like just super fans of movies. I loved that, but the idea that that people mm-hmm. are working their asses off trying to make a movie, and you're going to step in and start telling them <laughs> what they should do, that's just so wrong headed. I can't stand it. And I think they succeeded as well because. Indeed. I do think they sort of, in a lot of ways, steered the conversation yeah. of comic book movies into a different direction, which the studio should be thanking them. <laughs> a couple of the quick, quick things. I just read today that an actress named Carla Yuri was cast in the Blade Runner sequel. And I think you and I have talked about this before. No. We don't like the idea of like talking about our podcast on the podcast itself a bunch. But if you don't know Carla Yuri, she was the star of this German movie called Wetlands. And A, it's an amazing experience. But B, it was, it was actually the first movie that you and I talked about uh, with the recorders on. And we never released that episode because it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> it's our lost episode. Yeah, there's so much in that movie that has to be seen and experienced and then talked about. And we talked about it without spoiling anything. And then I think kind of realized, well, wait a second, there's not much. <laughs> we didn't really say much. <laughs> there's yeah. not much there if you don't talk about the things that are spoiler worthy in that movie because so much of it is. I don't know. Maybe one day we'll release that. But anyway, go see Wetlands and then get even more pumped for this Blade Runner sequel. The director's awesome. You got Harrison Ford, Ryan Gosling, Carly Yuri now. I don't know. I feel like it could be something special. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. That, if we're that, lucky. Th- th- this casting is, is one of the more exciting casts uh, that I've seen on, on anything going on right now. So, yeah. I, I love the fact that she's in it, that she's popping up here, and good luck to her. So, Sean. Yes, sir. You been watching anything lately? I have, actually. And since, you know, I think the theme of our show is just proving how far behind we are in seeing movies that we should have seen, mm-hmm. I finally just watched uh, Ex Machina the other night, the Alex Garland movie from last year, sci-fi with uh, Oscar Isaac, of course. And uh, a gentleman whose name I can never pronounce correctly, I think it's Dom and Hall Gleason. Dom and Hall Gleason, British Dom actor. Hall. I think it's Dom Hall Gleason. Yeah, I don't know. He's terrific. I love that guy. He was in Frank and uh, Unbroken, a bunch of other things. He's he's really, really good. You know what? It I, After having heard so much about this movie and the hype pretty intense, I loved it. I thought it was great. It lived up to everything, every expectation I have, and then 
quite a few that I didn't because of how small and contained it was and just super clever, super smart. You know, if you're into sci-fi and not necessarily the the bells and whistles of the Star Trek variety, um, definitely recommend checking this out if you haven't already. I just watched uh, recently uh, Creed. Mm-hmm. I haven't it's seen it yet. It's a new movie that's like a, it's sort of a, another sequel to Rocky. I don't know if anyone saw it. I don't think they did, no. I feel kind of the same way. I don't know if I feel quite as strongly as you did about uh, Ex Machina, but I, I, I find it amazing that you kind of went through all these Rocky movies. And, you know, the, the, it, it kind of fell off quality-wise mm-hmm. a little bit. I really like the first Rocky. Yeah. Probably the first three Rockies are super strong. Four is a childhood favorite. And then it just, they kind of kept going. But I think it's interesting. It, it was kind of a property that was taken on by, by somebody else, and they had a new spin on it. And not unlike Force Awakens... It was a familiar trip, but it really did have kind of a nice new spin on it. Like, if you're invested at all in the Rocky world, it's a really good movie. And what do you think? Do you think Stallone got robbed of, of an Oscar there, or what? Where do you I don't think that? Stallone got robbed of an Oscar. I think Michael B. Jordan got robbed of an Oscar, maybe. Yeah, or at least great. an Oscar nomination, because that kid works real hard in that movie. Do you remember him in The Wire, in the first season of The Wire? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. He's yeah. great. He's so good. Well, that, that and, and I remember him from uh, Friday Night Lights... He was really good mm-hmm. in that in the show. And that's and that's really the thing, you know. I mean, without without him at the center of this movie, kind of delivering the emotion he has to deliver, I don't think any of it would have worked. I mean, Stallone's great. Like Stallone sure. is is great, but it's it doesn't leave the impression that that, that he does. Um so if anybody got robbed, I think it was him. But uh but definitely a movie worth checking out. I would say how long before we get the Dolph Lundgren spin off? Yeah, it'll it'll be a while. <laughs> I'll be interested to see. Will he be North Korean this time? I don't know. I don't know. Like, who will be <laughs> the easy mark right. on that one? Craig, I think that's 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 an episode here. I think we got a, a mini sized sandwich I think here. So we don't want it to get too big. But speaking of big episodes, we'll be back next week to talk about uh, the listener suggested movie Monsieur Verdu, the Charlie Chaplin Orson Welles film, which I was informed today is streaming on Hulu. So go find that, watch it. Uh, Do your due diligence, and we'll be back to talk about it next time. Indeed. And until then, au revoir.